For more on today's top political news, Ed O'Keefe joins us from the White House. Ed is CBS News' senior White House and political correspondent. Hi, Ed. Good to see you, Nancy. So this federal judge in Florida today ruled that the Biden administration's COVID mask mandate for public transportation is unlawful. What did the judge say is unlawful about it and what happens next? Well, in essence, the judge said that while she doesn't dispute the idea that face masks help stop the spread of COVID-19, she doesn't believe the agency has the right to enforce such a mandate on federal transportation, public transportation and whatnot. And so just out from the White House a few moments ago, uh, they say here in a statement that while agencies are continuing to review that court decision and assess potential next steps, the TSA is no longer going to enforce its mask mandate on airplanes and at big federal transportation hubs, be that airports or train stations. But in the same statement, the White House points out that the CDC still recommends that people continue to wear masks in indoor public transportation settings. So in essence, if you want to wear your mask now on an airplane, on a public bus, on an Amtrak train, you can. But if you don't want to, you also now have that choice, you have that right. In essence, the mandate is gone, at least for now. Remember, CDC just last week had extended it for about two more weeks into early May, and that came amid criticism from the airlines, from others in the transportation industry, and from Americans who simply don't like the mask mandates anymore, saying it's ineffective, it's not necessary if the pandemic is ebbing the way it is, and at this point, people should be able to make their own decision. Today, with this surprise ruling from this federal district court judge in Tampa, the Biden administration is essentially throwing up its hands and saying, well, we can't enforce it for now. And uh, if you want to board a flight tonight or get on a train tonight without your mask on, the TSA isn't going to stop you from doing so. Right. Could see some um, tension filled moments on some planes and trains and buses uh, coming up in the next 24, 48 hours. OK, yeah. on to another topic, uh, Title 42. So this is the Trump era immigration order regarding the southern border. It's set to end on May 23rd. It continues to be a huge issue for the Biden administration. Today, you had Democratic Senator Gary Peters. He's the chair of the Senate Homeland Security and Governmental Affairs Committee saying, quote, unless we have a well thought out plan, I think it is something that should be revisited and perhaps delayed. This is, of course, the, um, the measure that enables the administration to prevent uh, migrants coming across the southern border from getting into the country because of COVID. So, Ed, what are you hearing from the White House on all of this? Because Peters is far from the only Democrat who has expressed concerns about the lack of a plan. Yeah, and notably, most of those that are raising concerns are Democratic senators running for re-election in states where this kind of an issue is going to be a hot-button one for independent voters, for disaffected Democrats, and certainly for Republicans and their opponents. Notably, though, White House continues to point out, defenders of immigration policy in this country also continue to point out, Title 42 is a public health order from the same agency, the CDC, that's the one recommending the face mask mandate. And the idea being, uh, it's an order that says border agents... Uh, other personnel along the border can stop migrants from crossing due to public health concerns that they are not properly vaccinated or protected against COVID-19. It is now ending, as are many other, uh, you know, pandemic era restrictions that the CDC has put, put in place. And so this administration says this isn't an immigration issue. This is a public health issue that has sort of served in, and they believe, an inhumane way to stop people from crossing the border when they know that there is an immigration problem that Washington continues to fail to confront. And so in essence today, Jen Psaki told me, if Congress has issues with this, let's work together on passing legislation that the president has proposed that would bolster security along the U.S.-Mexico border, that would provide more technology to track people who are trying to cross illegally, uh, mm -hmm. that would create visa systems for people to come in in a more legal way, uh, and, and then, of course, all, all the other components that are often debated. The problem is... Democrats know that this is an issue that becomes emotional, highly charged, incredibly partisan every two years in an election year. And this order is ending in late May at around the same time that traditionally there is a surge beginning along the U.S.-Mexico border as migrants come from Central America, the Caribbean, and now increasingly from places like Ukraine. Uh, who just travel into Central America to try, or to Mexico to try to then cross over uh, because the weather's better and they can do it at that time. There's also concern that the thousands who have been held on the southern side of the border are just suddenly going to immediately surge across 
and potentially inundate these communities along the Texas or Arizona border who are not going to be able to deal with the crush. And so that's why you see, for example, Senator Mark Kelly of Arizona, who's got plenty of money in the bank and in a pretty good poll position, but knows that this will quickly become a big home state concern. Catherine Cortez Masto out of Nevada as well. But even Democratic senators and candidates like Maggie Hassan, the senator from New Hampshire, and Mandela Barnes, a leading Democratic uh, uh, Senate candidate in Wisconsin, two northern border states, bringing up this issue, putting distance between them and the White House because they know it'll be a quick issue of concern and criticism from those on the other side. Bottom Authority. line, there is no yet... Uh, uh, specific plan to deal with Title 42 because as the administration sees it, it just means enforcing immigration law as it currently exists. Right. It's a thorny issue without a lot of great uh, short-term solutions. Uh, Ed, the Biden administration announced late, late on Friday that it was going to restart oil and gas leases for drilling on federal land. Uh, this is something that the uh, a moratorium that the Biden administration put in place right at the beginning of uh, President Biden's term. So how is the administration balancing uh, its efforts to try to lower gas prices with the fact that it doesn't want to compromise its environmental priorities? And that's exactly what this is. It's a balance. Because by putting up those acres, uh, that's about the bare minimum uh, the energy industry would tell you that they could put up. Whereas environmentalists turn around and say, no, why are you doing this? Why are you kowtowing to the energy industry when they already own thousands of leases, are paying for thousands of leases on unmarked, untapped land that they could otherwise be drilling in? And that's whether that's in Utah, whether that's in parts of Colorado, Wyoming, Texas, and other places. The energy industry says, look, this is expensive stuff. We had to sell off a lot of our equipment during the recession uh, in order to meet our other obligations. Uh, startup costs are incredible, and yet they push for more land. The administration says, here you go. This is uh, potentially an option for you. But they also point out, and this is why they kind of turn their nose and roll their eyes at some of the energy industry criticism is you've got those thousands of leases. You've had them for several years. It'll take months, if not years, for you to properly explore and develop and then drill out the oil that may be there. So while they are offering this now, they know it is a long-term solution, not a short-term one. And it's why you continue to see these modest attempts to demonstrate that the White House is doing something, whether it's providing those leases that the energy industry can now go and tap, whether it's allowing E15 gasoline to be sold for bigger vehicles all through the summer, despite the emissions issues that may come up with that, mm -hmm. uh, or whether it's releasing oil from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve, they can turn to the American public that's upset with this and polling that shows that they want to see the president doing more and say, well, we've done what we can. And at this right. point, it's either driven by market forces or Vladimir Putin and his ongoing war in Ukraine. Right. Nibbling around the edges. All right. Ed O'Keefe, thank you so much. Take care.